Hi everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed that film. I know that I needed a few tissues all the way through it, but so inspired today on World Kindness Day. And I'm excited to introduce you a couple of Bridge Meadows special friends, Ruby Houghton Pitts. Ruby is the AARP State Director for Oregon and so much more. She is a true champion of age-friendly communities for all ages in the state of Oregon, and I call her a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Welcome, Ruby. And you, we have Trent Stamp, CEO of the Eisner Foundation, the only foundation in this uh, country who funds intergenerational solutions. And we are blessed to have been a Eisner, an Eisner Prize winner back in 2014. And we are grateful that both of you are here today. Thank you very much. So we've all watched the movie and we all uh, engage in the intergenerational age-friendly space. And I'm wondering what struck you about the film and how it uh, moves into age-friendly and intergenerational issues that we uh, advocate for every day. Ruby? You know, Dorinda, as I watched the movie, I thought about um, community and how it used to be long ago that we were intertwined in community, not completely separated in community. And that part of the reason why we don't know each other and the why we don't have kind of that combined experience is because our communities have been separated. And so as I watched the movie, I was so touched by the intergenerational um, context. I was struck by the interracial, mm -hmm. the sexual context, um, for loving who you need to love, the religious context. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me over and over again that what we are doing in trying to build age-friendly intergenerational spaces where people can live, work, and play together is truly the right thing to do. I hear you, Ruby. I was touched by that as well. Trent, how did it land for you? Well, obviously I felt similarly to Ruby, but I, mean, I think I was, I was most struck by the fact that um, there was a, a genuine yearning on behalf of, of most of the young people um, and the older folks involved, obviously, but um, for high contact touch um, and to be um, to be nurtured, to be supported, to be celebrated, to be mentored, um, people were thirsty for that kind of contact and that kind of um, intergenerational um, relationship and. Um, as far as I could tell, nobody was related to anybody else in any way whatsoever. So they were, they were defining family by those that were close to them and by those who were willing to take care of them um, and those who were willing to, um, you know, to provide them with, with purpose. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, my biggest takeaway is that I, I think that we are all the media reports aside, I think we are kind people. Um, I think this nation is filled with kind people, um, but we have to figure out ways to institutionalize that kindness um, because I think if you ask people if they want to take care of the more vulnerable people in their society, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. They just don't necessarily know how. Yeah. One of my colleagues has said, wouldn't it be interesting if we had a minister of kindness or a leader of kindness in our country and infused all that into all the systems? And you heard that with Dr. McConnell, uh, as he said, you can look through a prism and see all the fractures of all, this, uh, all the systems. But what if the lens was, I'm going to look at you through the lens of kindness and love on you? And Trent, you touched on something that we see happen at Bridge Meadows every day when Cheryl, one of the moms in the film, said, I learned that my family didn't have to be related to me. Yeah. And Ruby, you touched on that when you said, we used to know each other, so what yeah. happened? <laughs> and so yeah. I think about if that's what 
the three of us and many, many others believe, how is it that we help the young ones, the younger generation, the generations who are gonna come after us and uh, make their impact on the world, how do we help them embrace kindness and be kind in the world? Any thoughts? I believe that there's a level of inclusiveness that has to take place and that we have to embrace all of the generations. Mm -hmm. And I think we're lucky because we're sitting in a center point where we have an opportunity to go both direction, directions. And so the ability to embrace and to share and to be inclusive in our actions and our behaviors actually leads the way. I think that there are organizations doing really, really good work. Um, and even for AARP, we're, tr we're breaking out of the mold. When I start talking about AARP, mm. I talk about people 50 plus in their families because we are not separated by age. We come out of families, we come out of communities. And in those environments, there are people of all ages who wanna help. And so I think we, we do segmenting mm. in our society. We change things to black and white and brown and generationally, we do that. And so why can't we do something different? And I think we can. And so I, I have it as a goal of mine to be much more inclusive in the work that we do um, so that nobody feels left out and nobody gets left behind. And I mean, sometimes those are just words that people use, but I truly feel like those are action words and we need to act on them. You know, Ruby, you are really such a champion for the fact that ARP is not just about people who are 55 or 50 and older. It's for everybody. And that's one of the things I so enjoy about working with you because we're always together trying to think, who isn't at the table? Who needs to be here? Whose voice do we need to be, who needs to be heard? So you just keep going on that, Ruby, because I'm gonna stand right next to you there in Oregon, helping make that happen. You know, for Ruby, everybody's gonna be 50 plus someday. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we all can be members of ARP. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't want people to think that it's not for you. I've been a member of AARP since I was in my 30s. And I became a member because I was stealing my parents' magazine. And my mom made the decision that, you know, we need to buy her that magazine. And there's an associate membership that you can get with AERP. Trent, you can get that. I know how young you are. And so it's kind of, a, it, for me, um, my mom passed away shy of my 50th birthday. And that magazine came in the mail to me because she had paid for it in advance. So that was an act of kindness, kindness and that's why I'm such um, a cheerleader for ADRP. And we're gonna bestow that act of kindness and sign Trent up, Ruby. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Trent, you right, have first, this awesome job. No, for, first of all, yes. I am 50 as of this year. And second Welcome. of all, I have not joined. I have not joined AARP yet, but it's not for lack of their trying. Um, Lord, Ruby, I got five solicitations the first month. Um, so I, I, I will now that. I, That's I only only five, join. Trent. <laughs> I, you know, they they. I got them before. I got a birthday card from my own wife. AARP was on it. So you guys are certainly doing the outreach work. And if uh, people aren't joining, it's simply because they're being stubborn and don't want to acknowledge that they're uh, that they're 50 years old yet. But uh, it sounds like I should break down and give in to uh, to access the services and the community. Well, as your friends, we'll help you with that. So All right. Trent, you've got this awesome job where you get to go around the country, the world, frankly, and witness intergenerational programs doing incredible things to bring the generations together. So would you like to share about the most recent Eisner Prize winner? Sure, the Eisner Prize, um, for those of who are not fully familiar, um, is our attempt to recognize 
the single best intergenerational organization in the United States in any one particular year. Um, we want to hold them up and, and let people see um, what a good intergenerational organization looks like. We want to learn from them and we want to try to replicate their work um, back in, in our community, which is Southern California. Um, and as you mentioned, of course, uh, Bridge Meadows was a very worthy winner um, a few years ago of, of that prize. And, uh, and we're very proud of, of honoring Bridge Meadows um, because it was, uh, it was the right thing to do for an organization that has modeled all of the uh, successful intergenerational behaviors. But this year we found an organization in Puerto Rico um, called ARECMA. Um, which is a long acronym for way too many words in Spanish for me to, uh, to try to regurgitate here without insulting somebody. Um, but please look them up. It's A-R-E-C-M-A, -E uh, Arecma. And it is a true intergenerational organization um, in a truly intergenerational community um, doing fabulous intergenerational work around um, education and the arts and feeding people um, under unbelievably difficult circumstances, as we all know, um, in Puerto Rico in the last few years. And uh, we, we were totally blown away by how great their work was. Um, but we also wanted to stand on a box a little bit and tell people um, that Puerto Rico is an important part of the United States um, and doing very important work. And when you're looking for the best organizations in the United States, you certainly should uh, shine your light on Puerto Rico also because it's a, it's a vibrant and uh, an interesting community full of uh, full smart and um, engaged people uh, doing the best they can under sometimes difficult circumstances. So how's the program bringing the generations together? Uh, well, in all the different ways that, that you could possibly imagine when you have a, a multi-organization like that that has many different purposes, um, but primarily by utilizing older people um, to teach and mentor younger people, um, and they have a, a special focus on um, trying to get younger people into the political process um, in the sense of trying to make them leaders um, who can learn from, from the older people who have been there, done that, as we like to say, um, and, can, uh, and can provide the leadership that they need. So um, they have a million different programs, whether it's, it's cooking or tutoring or mentoring or, or the arts or, or festivals and those types of things. But all of it kind of um, is predicated on the idea that um, we have much to learn from each other, um, no matter how old or how young you are. Thanks for shining a light on the folks in Puerto Rico. We're so excited to welcome them to the Eisner Prize team and family. So Absolutely. it's exciting. I look forward to meeting their leadership. I was so struck by the mentorship between the elders and the younger generation in rising them uh, and the elders say, it's taking a step back and saying, go fly, be the voice, we got your back. Sure. And you know, in many, black, indigenous, and people of color cultures, this intergenerational thing that we love so much is part of the DNA. It just happens. And I am struck by when elders um, who are black or people of color moving to Bridge Meadows and they're just, they just get it. They know how this goes to bring family together and I just want to acknowledge that, that this is not something new. This is the idea of bringing the generations together has been going on forever. And sure. it's now time that we all who believe in that, who are white, become aligned, become accomplice, and uh, share the value and the joy and the power of living intergenerationally. And Ruby, I know that's what we talk about there in Portland, Oregon. And yeah. you've been doing a lot of work in that space. You want to share with the audience some of the sure. strategies? Sure. Um, AARP is very involved in building an age-friendly state. Um, we have pulled together 30 plus champions for age-friendly. Um, some of them are organizations, some of them are individuals across the state who truly believe 
that working together, we can actually do all the things that we've been talking about here and a whole lot more. The age-friendly concept actually came out of the World Health Organization and AERP is a partner with World Health. And our reason for doing this is because, you know, I, I have been teaching kids, um, no man is an island, no man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me. Each man's grief is my own. And I, I think people, we stop learning that in school. And what happens when you stop moving that forward is that all the things that are necessary for a vibrant community falling off. And so whether it's housing or transportation or beautiful outdoor spaces for play and buildings that are people friendly, whether you are a person with disabilities or something else, um, what what we talk about are making sure that we have community and health services in places where people can get to them and that civic participation and the ability to participate in your community exists and then to be able to socialize um, that was a wonderful um, opportunity as we saw the people sitting around that circle learning and the bridge meadows clips that showed um, people talking and the inside of that building and those beautiful spaces for social participation in that courtyard where the little boy like me was riding the bicycle and he was like, oh, this is so much easier. And for me, it's much easier when there are other people involved because the lift is lighter. And then providing that and social inclusion that's so necessary regardless of what your lifestyle is like. And so having communities where there's room for everyone is really what Age Friendly is about. And again, when I say no one gets left behind, our elders are an integral part of that. The home spaces, the community, the ability to move around, the safety, all of those things have to be in place. So it's no different for an eight-year-old than it is for an 80 or a 90-year-old. We want that environment to be integrated and we want to make sure that people are not left out. Yes, couldn't agree with you more, Ruby. You know, earlier in, uh, as we were chatting, you were saying, Trent, that people really look like they wanna be together, they wanna be kind, and that it's something that we all wanna do and we're not all going, no, never mind. And now here we are in COVID, and we can't have those interactions like we did maybe at the mailbox running to your neighbors. So what are some ideas you've been seeing as you visited intergenerational programs and talked with intergenerational programs about what, what creative things are people doing to bring the generations together despite the fact that we have to be physically distant and virtual all the time? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's the rub, right? I mean, you know, we have we have known for a long time that when you put two people in a room um, organically, you know, good things can happen, um, no matter how old they are, or, you know, where they come from, and what their socioeconomic status is, and what they look like. Um, but getting them in that room nowadays is much harder. Um, so we've been heartened by organizations that have um, have been doing it virtually, um, and it can be done. Um, and you know, in some cases, it it gets easier, um, right? I mean, if I don't have to, you know, get in my car or take a bus or you know, or do these types of things to go mentor or tutor a kid, um, I've lost about nine out of the ten excuses for why I don't do it. Um, so you know. It, if your goal is to raise up a child's life and to be a mentor or a tutor, um, you don't have any excuses right now. I, you know, it's, it's the opportunities are there, and we have certainly worked with a bunch of organizations that are doing that type of work here in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to reach out to me and you're in this community, I'll be happy to connect you to those types of things. But I think you can find them. Um, you know, the good organizations. Um, they looked around for a couple of weeks and said, woe is me, you know, this is lousy, you know, this is really affecting our operations. 
um, and then they decided to fix it um, in whatever that would look like. And so if you had a good organization in your community, whatever it was, um, whether it was housing or education or arts or women's rights or the environment, um, I guarantee you they're still doing their work. Um, they're just doing it virtually um, in some form or another. And so, you know, if you want to get involved, um, and that would be my charge to everybody 50 plus, um, get involved. Every, you know, everybody over 50 should be mentoring. Everybody over 50 should be tutoring. Um, we all have so much to give back. Um, and I think that this movie um, showed that um, it can make the world a difference in a young person's life. Um, and I think that, you know, as we wander around trying to figure out what our purpose is in life, um, that seems like a pretty good one is to, uh, is to uh, you know, open up pathways for, uh, for people who are, are young and ambitious and want to make the world a better place. So um, it's there. We just, you know, you just, you just have to work a little bit. You know, at Bridge Meadows, when the schools closed uh, because of the pandemic, our elders automatically went, oh, no problem. We'll just make a tutoring program in the community room. And we were like, you knew <laughs> not safe. Yeah. But what happened was all these creative ideas started pouring out of elders. And there were kids six feet apart from elders re being read books and uh, you know, phone calls, is your homework done? And people figured it out because they wanted to, Trent. And I, right. I so agree with you. If we have the desire, we can make it happen. And there, if you don't know how, there are people willing to support you in helping you figure it out. And one of the things that struck me about the film was just the smallest dose of kindness made a big difference. And I'm with you, that's the charge for all of us, is to walk away from this film and think about what's that 10, 15 moments of kindness that I can do this next week and beyond. But let's just start with a week that can make a difference in somebody's life. And it could be opening the door to the grocery store, it could be, um, as much as saying, hey, I see you, hello, how's, how are you doing from across the street? I think we can embed kindness in our everyday life, and I think many of us want to do that. And so I thank you both for being here today. It was truly an honor to be a part of this film and then to spend time with some of our very special friends. And so we wish you all the best today on World Kindness Day and go out and do something kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.